Hi everyone, so I'm Lee Coventry. I'm a CSC with Cisco. Uh, previously, uh, I worked for a small IPS company called Sourcefire, so very much my skill is uh, next-gen firewall IPS threat detection type technologies. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of those today, specifically regarding ransomware. Um, so just what I want to try and cover, just some of the basics. What is it? It's, <laughs> it's a very popular form of malware at the moment, and although we've been talking about ransomware for a long time within Cisco, uh, the reason I'm presenting it again is it's still very relevant. We're seeing it all the time, and obviously uh, the Cisco Talos team, the security intelligence team, still see it daily. So it is an important subject, and we like to cover that. So we want to just talk about some of the basics, uh, some of the overview of how it works, and of course, then we want to go into some of the ways you can try and defend against ransomware as a, as a form of malware. Um, so some solution architecture and hopefully some takeaways on what you could try and do to better protect yourself against this type of threat. So of course, ransomware. Basically, what is it? What does it do? It is a form of malware that encrypts your files, but importantly, it forces you into a mechanism of immediately paying to release them. So the financial transaction of the malware is very quick, very direct. And this is why uh, malware authors like it. It's immediate. A lot of malware before had to go through different stages and events to try and extract money, whether it be uh, through maybe phishing or trying to get credit card numbers or any of these types of, of fish or other forms of malware for data exploit, uh, ex exfiltration. But of course, with ransomware, you don't. They have a piece of malware on the device, encrypts your disk, pops up a screen. You have to follow the information on the screen and pay them directly. And, and this is a, a lovely way to, to make money. So. Um, it is very popular at the moment. So have you seen some of these? You've probably heard of some of these different variants of ransomware. Uh, sometimes they are, it's the same malware, but it's been morphed slightly into a different variant. Sometimes it's built from the ground up to be a brand new piece of malware. So throughout time, it's been changing. Different ransomware variants are turning up. Uh, up to and including some of the more recent ones that you may have heard of, Tesla Crypt, Locky, Sam Sam. Um, I love the names they give these things. But primarily, just some figures here. Um, so cyber criminals collected 209 million in the first three months of uh, 2016. That's a lot of money. And it's all direct to them, into their bank accounts uh, through the Onion Network. Uh, Tor, you may have heard it called. So heavily encrypted, you can't really trace them. It's a great design for making money. So ransomware defense overview. Well, what do you have to try and do to stop this type of attack from occurring? And uh, this is what I want to go through today, just to try and give you some ideas of what to think about, the types of technologies that you should consider to secure your networks. Uh, and maybe I could point out some quick wins for you guys, because obviously there's a lot of different security products that all have a place in detecting malware, whether it be uh, an exploit to deliver a, an execute, uh, um, a malicious payload, or if it could be email security delivering it, or web security, a link uh, to try and stop uh, someone going to malicious sites. So there's lots of different technologies but some of them are quite key. And uh, I suppose the best way to put it is bang for buck. There are some technologies, which I'll cover first, which are the serious consideration. And obviously, in security, as you know, it's sort of a game of percentages. You pay X amount, and you can get 90% protection. But then each time you pay a, little bit, uh, a lot more, you only get a little bit more protection. So there's a couple of technologies that straight away I would definitely recommend. And if you already have them, which most people do, make sure they're updated and they're ready to, to go and be serviced and make sure the support contracts are valid. But before I go into technologies, the most important thing when it comes to ransomware is backup. Correct backup. If you get hit, that's it. Your data is gone unless you really want to pay. 
but obviously what we're starting to see uh, initially, a lot of ransomware, if you can call it this, they were quite honest. So they would give you a prompt to pay them, and then they would unlock your files. They would give you the key to unlock your files. But obviously, as time goes on and more and more different businesses turn up, a lot of them don't do that. And this is what we're starting to see now. Unfortunately, even if you do pay them, some of the variants, it won't unlock your drive. So you've paid the money, you still don't get your data back. So then it becomes, well, do you pay, don't you pay? Well, the best way around that is to have a secure backup um, using whatever mechanisms and systems you think you need. Uh, there's a, obviously, there's various different methodologies, uh, so off-site backups, tape backups, or even duplicated machines for instant, real-time backing up. But whatever the process you choose, this is the number one most important thing. Because if you do get hit, it's the only way you're going to get your data back. So a little bit about how it works. Apologies if this is very simplistic, but um, I like to present it this way. So obviously, somehow they need to get you to interact usually in some way or another. So that could be a web redirect through email. Uh, it could be a, a, malicious, a malicious attachment to email. So there's various different mechanisms um, uh, to try and get you to do something. Uh, but of course, once you do whatever that is, so usually click on a link, uh, that link would usually take you to um, what is known as an exploit kit. So it's a framework that looks at your machine and then delivers a malicious payload to exploit a component on the machine. Now, obviously, that exploitation is to then deliver a malicious file in some way or another uh, and then be able to execute that file. So obviously, with uh, an exploit-driven malware delivery, sometimes they can execute that file without you realizing, because the idea is, is they've exploited a component on the machine, an application uh, that you would run, and it's given them system privileges to be able to run that file. On the other hand, it could well be just uh, trying to get you to go to various sites or download and open files. Uh, just using spammed emails and things like that. So there's lots of different techniques, a lot of social engineering involved. And of course, as long as you can try and train your staff well enough, you can actually cut out a lot of these types of attack just by making sure your staff don't click on links and open attachments. It's quite simple things. So of course, once it's communicated to the malicious infrastructure, um, drop to file, a file could be executed on the endpoint. And this is where the magic, as they're concerned, has happened. Your files are encrypted. Uh, they can generate a key. They keep that key. And then they deliver a page to you to give you the instructions on how to pay them. And then hopefully, they'll tell you how, how to unlock your files. So that's pretty much how it works. So as you can see, from what we found within Cisco, so our Talos security intelligence team, is we found pretty much all of them use DNS for callbacks. And obviously, that is quite good. If you have a technology around DNS, that can try and stop some of those attacks. And of course, Cisco have. Uh, so one of the acquisitions uh, we made uh, was OpenDNS. It's now called Umbrella. And of course, that is a security technology specifically around DNS and domains. And using that technology, we can start to see malicious dom domains and their relationships with each other, so on and so forth. So that's a good way to try and stop the callback, uh, as an example. But of course, if you think about attacks in uh, kill chain, and there are various different groups that make kill chains, and they're slightly different, but they all fall along the same line. So you have uh, various stages of attack and of course, you can then try and use training or a technology to mitigate one stage of that attack. And this is how you sort of build a, a secure architecture of technologies. Um, so recon, stage, launch, exploit, install, callback, and persist. Uh, pretty standard stuff. So what's important is when you're trying to think about solutions that match these stages of attack, 
that's how you can start to think about architecture. So um, I already have this technology, but maybe the gap in my security is this technology based upon this part of the kill chain. Maybe I don't have any technologies here that can protect me against this stage of the kill chain. So hopefully that makes sense. But I've got some examples just to give you an idea. So capabilities needed to break the kill chain, uh, threat intelligence, email security, web security, DNS security, as I've mentioned. So there's various different technologies that fit in to those different columns of the kill chain. Uh, and just to give you an idea, so recon, you can think that maybe a firewall or an IPS can stop that sort of thing. You know, it stops. Actively, uh, people actively scanning your network uh, with the correct segmentation uh, and blocking traffic that you don't really need in your environment. And of course it goes on, staging, uh, launching an attack. There are various different point in time detection technologies that can try and protect you. Uh, email, web, IPS again. Exploit, again, IPS you see heavily used in that space. Anti-malware can try and stop. Uh, obviously some of these technologies overlap. But hopefully what you take away is to start thinking framework rather than point product, uh, because that's one of the things in Cisco uh, we believe is quite important in security. There's too many times when uh, businesses come to me specifically, and I'm a firewall expert, and they say, oh, I need a firewall or I need IPS. Uh, but nobody's questioned why they need that. So what I hope to get across to you is think about maybe kill chains, Think about technology gaps you're missing, what they do, how they can protect you, and don't just think about the big product that's just you know run out, oh, the, the support contract's run out, we just need a firewall. Well, do you need a firewall? Is that the product that you need today? Have you been attacked that a firewall could have prevented? Or in fact, is there a gap that maybe is better filled, could be cost, or could be because you have no technology in that area that could actually fulfill that budget. So hopefully these <laughs> sessions are trying to change the mind of some people because uh, just buying a firewall for the sake of it, I really hope is becoming a thing of the past, but I still see it way too often. <laughs> so just a bit about the quick wins. Um, I talk about Cisco's technologies because obviously I know about them, but you don't have to have Cisco. There's a lot of different vendors selling a lot of different security kit in the space. But just to give you an idea of what I consider a quick win when it comes to malware, um, email security. Uh, email is still the number one vector for malware and ransomware. So if you're going to buy any technology, make it an email solution, specifically with ransomware. It's got the highest chance of blocking that malicious activity. It will see the most of it start there. But of course, as part of that, web security. So being able to detect, monitor, and look at malicious uh, web links and redirects. So a web security technology, again, very important. Uh, and it can uh, fit into the kill chain and try and block this malicious activity from happening by blocking people from clicking on links that they shouldn't be going to. And of course, any DNS callback, remember from before, if you have a, a DNS technology, and admittedly, there are not that many vendors in the space. Obviously, OpenDNS, I think, were probably the most well-known uh, business. Uh, there are a few others. Um, but protecting through uh, DNS blocking, the reason it works so well, uh, and we find uh, Umbrella has a very high efficacy, well, it's because you're stopping a connection before anything else has happened. And that's so key in these types of attack. Um, if you think uh, a firewall or even an IPS placed behind a firewall or endpoint technologies, all very important. But that is to say those technologies only work if someone is knocking or through your front door. Whereas a DNS-based technology, you're stopping an attack before any malicious activity gets to you. So Umbrella to us has become quite a major component of our security architecture in Cisco. And of course, if and it can evade all of those, we get to the end point. This is where you would 
need some sort of endpoint technology. Um, so with regards to Cisco, that would be called AMP, uh, so Advanced Malware Protection. Um, but of course, lots of vendors out there have endpoint-based uh, malware detection capabilities. So for us, it's AMP. Uh, there's a key difference that we like to talk about with AMP is the fact that although it's very good at blocking at a point in time, uh, the key difference with AMP is we never forget we've seen a file. So what usually happens with any reputational type cloud, you see lots of uh, intelligence or files as far as AMP's concerned. If you don't know it's bad at that point in time, for most technologies, they forget about it. So if you think about a, um, an AV signature, like a, an old school AV signature on, a, on an endpoint, that signature has to match something it knows. If there's something new and malicious and there's no signature for that, it's missed. But that product does not remember that missed file. So the key piece of engineering we've built into AMP is we remember all files regardless if they were bad. And that's one of the key components because what it means is we can alert you back in time when we know something's malicious that we may have missed before. So some key technologies that Cisco has, but of course broadly, an endpoint malware capability is essential. So for us, I would say your quick win, definitely email security without a doubt. Web security, just as important, I would suggest. Um, for us, obviously, DNS security works very well, but you have less choice of vendors there. Umbrella is Cisco's version. Uh, but if you can get that type of technology, that's a very good way of blocking all the bad stuff before it even gets near you. And then finally, an endpoint technology. Now, of course, most businesses already have those anyway, but next time you need to renew, uh, your endpoint technology, make sure you have a good look around at some of the new advanced features that a lot of the vendors offer today, such as AMP and the retrospective type security we offer. So it's very important. Don't just rely on the old school AV just because it's easy to sign the check and that, that you're doing yourself an injustice. You will get hit because most modern malware, the reason we call our product advanced malware protection, is it can easily evade a lot of these endpoint technologies now. So I just want to extend it a little further. Now, obviously, the first slide, they're the quick win. They're the, the products and technologies that fit nicely into the kill chain that I would always urge my customers to consider first for this type of attack. But of course, when you talk security architecture, there's some other technologies that can also help uh, with regards to malicious activity, malicious files. Um, so I'll just cover a few of those to give you an idea of the more expanded scope. Um, so of course, firewalls and IPSs, we've mentioned those already, uh, but they can block connections as well. So the Cisco next-gen firewall, next-gen IPS has security intelligence feeds to block CNC callbacks and various other malicious activity as well as exploits. Um, we have StealthWatch, which uses NetFlow uh, to monitor malicious activity. So, for example, um, you could use that heavily with things like point-of-sale systems. Uh, if you have a point-of-sale system and suddenly it starts sending data to a destination, it really shouldn't. That is an anomaly that a product like StealthWatch would pick up straight away to say this activity is not normal for that given device. Um, ICE and TrustSec, so ICE for Cisco is Identity Services Engine. So this is uh, using uh, a capability to make sure people are correctly authenticated onto a network, but also for segmentation. So it's to make sure areas of your network are separated. And that helps to stop any sort of malware from moving to different areas of the network, because a major component of malware is to try and reproduce, copy, and reinstall elsewhere. So other things to definitely consider um, as an architecture when you're trying to stop ransomware or other malware types. A few key takeaways then. So like I say, Talos is seeing ransomware. It's, it's here. It's probably here to stay for the foreseeable future. It's easy money for criminals. Um, uh, it's so easy for them to deploy. It doesn't require much. Uh, a lot of it is based on phishing type attacks. And 
the easiest way is to just craft a malicious looking email, send a few links. You gotta remember, you only have to hit one or two people and hopefully if you can get a machine exploited, well, if they don't get anything out of that particular machine, as soon as it starts moving around the business, they're bound to hit something that will make them some money. So it's probably not gonna go away for at least a few years until the next big idea comes up. Lots of uh, corporations being targeted, as you've already seen, WannaCry obviously is, is one such example. What I would say, cloud services, the, the easiest way to deploy protection. So uh, in the case of Cisco, that would be cloud email. I mean, you could have it appliance-based, but cloud email security is a very good method, very easy to deploy. Uh, and also I've mentioned it, Umbrella. Very simple to deploy. Uh, to give you an example for Umbrella, basically you're pointing your DNS to two of our uh, Umbrella DNS servers. And that's your configuration in the, the most simple possible way. So very easy to deploy and immediately you're then protected against a lot of this malicious activity. And as like I say, it's a percentage game. These products, email and umbrella, already give you a very heavy percentage against blocking this type of threat. And then everything else is a nice valuable extra on top. So what I did want to do, I just want to check I've got enough time here. Um, I wanted to do a live demo, which I do have. I don't know how well it's going to work. I think I'm running out of time. So what I'll do is I'll just show a couple of points. Um, we do have it in slide format, but obviously if I can try and show it in the demo. So what's important here, this demo is based upon Cisco's dCloud. I can spin this up and give this at any time. In fact, I could share this demo with customers and other users. So anything you see in dCloud, I could share with you. So if you wanted to take a look at the demo yourself, you could. Uh, so that is possible, and I can show you how to do that and work with you if you wanted to test some of our demos. Uh, dCloud has a lot of demos in it and a lot of our training materials. Uh, so for example, when I go to do firepower and IPS training, I use dCloud and spin up lots of instances for my students. So we use dCloud heavily. Uh, any of your contacts in Cisco should know about it. And if you do want to see more of certain technologies, speak to them and they can put you onto the security team and we'll have a demo to show you and to give you. So hopefully with this, it's just a, a couple of little links that I wanted to show. And if we're lucky, I might even be able to get the ransomware to run and you'll actually see it encrypting drives, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so of course, as I've said, email, number one vector. is very simple. So one of the first things, email and web security, it can block those malicious links when you click on them and it can redirect you and it can make sure that they're safe rather than just allowing you to go directly to the site. So, as you can see here, the requested web page may be dangerous. We give you plenty of warnings and we can block those malicious pages. So that's quite a simple technique. Um, and all it is, is it's built into our email security solution. We just make sure we redirect the links. Going beyond that, of course, if we're talking about other phishing type attacks. So of course here, going to Cisco Live, this is a phishing email. It has a link embedded in it again. But of course, certain links can be blocked immediately with a technology like Umbrella based upon DNS. Uh, and this is the example, and this is how it would look on your system. You would click on that link. Umbrella would just return the block page to you. It's that simple. What I'm going to try now, hopefully, is if I can uninstall these and go to that site, we might be able to get the malware to run. So let's go here.
Hopefully it's not going to be too long. Oh, there we go. Right, so now if we go there, hopefully Umbrella won't block it, which it hasn't. So you saw that work. I uninstalled Umbrella and immediately that site was allowed through. It's that simple. If I do scroll down on here, And as you can see, I tried to download a malicious file. Endpoint AMP is also installed on this device. So we actually blocked that file and quarantined it as soon as we saw it. So there's two layers or three layers of security straight away. Email security, possibly in, conjun in conjunction with web security to block those malicious links. But you could also have umbrella for maybe roaming users, as an example, who aren't on site with one of those security technologies. Umbrella, as you see, just blocks access to that site straight away. Uninstall Umbrella, it allowed us through, as you'd expect. I click on a file to try and download it. It's a known malicious file. AMP blocks it. Remember with AMP, though, which is quite key, is if that file was brand new and unique, it may have allowed it onto the machine, but we would have remembered it. So in the future, like a minute, an hour, a day, when we have enough intelligence about that, we can retrospectively alert you. And not only that, we can tell you where that file has been within your environment. So that's why it's such a key benefit uh, of AMP technology. So finally, what hopefully I'm going to do is, if I can uninstall AMP as well, So hopefully, is that running? I think it is. Looks like it. There we go. So I don't know if you can see that, it's quite hard to see. But see these files here being encrypted now. So I uninstalled Umbrella, I uninstalled AMP, ran the file, that's it. It's now encrypting the drive. Eventually that will just pop up a screen with instructions on how I can get my credit card out and pay them money. It's that simple. So a few layers of defense. In this demo, three layers of defense if you like. All of those stages can be at a different point in the kill chain, have all stopped that activity from occurring. Get rid of those stages, and it is that simple. Click on a link, download a file, run, done. 